You know, you'd never guess it just by looking at someone. They're smiling, chatting, maybe heading off to work or making dinner. It all looks perfectly normal from the outside, but inside their bodies are waging a war. The heart starts pounding just from standing up. The world spins, energy just drains away. And most doctors haven't a clue why. This is life with dysautonomia. It's an invisible illness quietly affecting millions. And yet, so few truly understand it. Let's take a quick trip back in time. Late 19th, early 20th century, medicine was starting to unravel the mysteries of the body's autopilot, the autonomic nervous system. For ages, people thought that things like heartbeat and blood pressure just worked, immune to any kind of malfunction. But then, strange cases began popping up. Ordinary people suddenly fainting, their hearts racing out of nowhere, feeling unwell all the time, even when all their tests looked normal. By the early 1900s, doctors started to see a pattern. They gave it names like neurocirculatory asthenia or autonomic dysfunction. But it took decades before the term dysautonomia really caught on. So what is this system that's causing so much trouble? Well, the autonomic nervous system is basically your body's autopilot. It keeps your heart beating, manages your blood pressure, controls digestion, even tells your body when to sweat. There are two main branches, the sympathetic system, which is like the gas pedal when you're stressed or in danger, and the parasympathetic system, the brakes that calm things down. But with dysautonomia, the autopilot malfunctions. Signals get crossed. Stand up and you feel dizzy. Eat a meal and you might faint. And sometimes your heart decides to go on a wild ride just because. Dysautonomia isn't just one thing either. It's a collection of conditions. There's POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, where just standing up can send your heart rate soaring. Neurocardiogenic syncope, which causes fainting spells, sometimes from standing too long or feeling stressed. Autonomic neuropathy, often linked with diabetes, where nerve damage messes with blood pressure and digestion. And then there's multiple system atrophy, a rare, severe form that looks a bit like Parkinson's. All different, but all invisible. Living with dysautonomia is like running a marathon every day even if all you've done is shower or walk down the hall. You're fighting exhaustion, dizziness, pain. All while people around you say, but you don't look sick. And that's the hardest part, being seen, believed and understood. Now science is finally catching up. We've learned that dysautonomia can be genetic, triggered by viruses or caused by the immune system attacking nerves. Long COVID has brought a whole new wave of cases, especially POTS. Diagnosis isn't easy. Sometimes it takes years just to get the right tests. There's no single cure, but there are ways to manage it. More fluids, more salt, compression stockings, medication, and special exercise plans. Progress is slow, but it does happen. And the more we talk about dysautonomia, the more hope there is for understanding and support People living with dysautonomia are students, parents, athletes, professionals. They're fighting battles you can't see, showing everyday courage that deserves recognition. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't real. The future? It lies with science, yes, research into genetics and the immune system. But it also starts with compassion, listening, believing and sharing stories like this one because dysautonomia may be invisible, but the people living with it are anything but. Remember, the human body is complicated, but the human spirit is stronger. If you found this helpful, do subscribe and share. Let's bring these hidden struggles into the light.